The evolution of antibiotic resistance is such a serious problem that evolutionary biologists have started thinking about methods of treating patients that will not elicit an evolutionary response. Re we've seen that resistance evolves rapidly. We're losing the coevolutionary arms race, and there are some alternatives to drugs. One is slowing the emergence of resistance just by using moderate doses and targeting old age classes of pathogens. This is plausible. We think it can work, but it's controversial. Patients naturally want to get a strong dose if they can. Secondly, we might be able to use viruses themselves to fight bacterial infections. Phage multiply in proportion to their bacterial hosts with which they also co-evolve. So this has been tested and it works. Another possibility is to manipulate bacterial public goods so that cheaters invade and cooperators cannot take over again and to a certain degree, infe successful infection depends upon cooperation. It depends upon social behavior by bacteria. So if we can disrupt bacterial social behavior, we may be able to produce a type of treatment that doesn't elicit an evolutionary response. So the first idea is don't wipe out the competition. Use no more selection than is necessary to cure the patient. This preserves clones of less virulent pathogens that then compete with and suppress the more virulent ones. And it slows down the evolution of resistance. Andrew Reed gave a great TED Med talk on this. You can find it easily online. The second possibility is phage therapy. So here is a picture of a phage. It is a, a virus that attacks bacteria, but does not attack eukaryotic cells. Phage have several advantages. First, they multiply exponentially, as do bacteria. So a small initial dose of phage will multiply as they infect the bacteria, and that diminishes the need for repeated administrations. In other words, the dose self-adjusts to the intensity of the infection. Phage also mutate during replication, as do bacteria, so that produces new phage that can recognize altered bacteria. In other words, Bacteria can't run away uh, genetically from the phage. The phage keep up with them. Unlike traditional antibiotics, which kill useful bacteria that help us digest food and produce vitamins, phage can be used to target specific bacteria, which reduces the chance that useful bacteria are killed. One of the problems with antibiotic treatment is that it wipes out most of the microbiota and that allows resistant strains of things like C. difficile to invade. That problem can be avoided with phage therapy. Here is a timeline. It's a long timeline, and so it's small and a little bit difficult to read. I'll step through some of the high points. The point is that phage therapy has a long history and it's had some success. So phage were discovered about 1915. Already in the 19 20s, uh, they were being used for therapy, so there were experimental treatments. In the 1930s, there were uh, studies of commercial phage production. However, in the 1930s also, the Council on Pharmacy and Chemistry, which had a self-interest in using chemicals rather than phage, concluded that phage therapy is of questionable value. In Eastern Europe, there was an institute that was founded to study experimental phage infections, but in the 1940s, the antibiotic revolution came along, and antibiotics then overshadowed phage therapy. In the 1980s, experiments were done that showed that phage can be more effective than antibiotics in some cases. In the 1980s, the Institute of Immunology and Experimental Therapy in Rolklaw in Poland began treating humans with phage therapy, and over the next 20 years, more than 1,800 patients were treated successfully. More recently, there's been phage therapy for vancomycin-resistant bacteria infections that were, these experiments were done in mice, and also for methicillin-resistant staph aureus. So, 
This is a promising technique, and it's one that bacteria cannot evolve defenses against. So while the U.S. and other countries were investing in antibiotics, the Russians actually used phage to treat bacteria. Mouse studies show phage can be just as effective as antibiotics, and clinical studies are starting in the United States. Phage were recently approved for protecting humans from beef that has been contaminated with a virulent strain of E. coli. And here are just a few fo photos to evoke some of the cases in which phage therapy has been effe effective for field wounds, for cholera, and to sterilize beef infected by E. coli. Phage therapy has both pros and cons. Phage kill bacteria, they can't recover. They automatically adjust their dosing. They have low inherent toxicity. They minimally disrupt our commensal microbiota. There is no byproduct resistance evolution. They can be rapidly discovered with screening approaches. They can be applied flexibly. They can clear out biofilms that resist antibiotics. There is potential for just using a single dose there's a potential to transmit protection to other patients. There's little environmental impact and they have low cost. However, there are some problems. Non-lytic phage are inappropriate, shouldn't be used. Their narrow host ranges can sometimes be disadvantageous. If you don't know which bacterium you have precisely, then the phage may not work. They can evolve and they can interact with our immune system. However, live attenuated vaccines do the same. Now, the use of phage for therapy against bacterial infections also reminds us that phage can be used to attack cancer. And there are some oncolytic viruses. The idea is that you can have an inoculum, which is these little purple uh, dots here are the virus going in, the virus is a cancer cell living among a bunch of normal cells. And the idea is to target the phage only to hit the cancer cells and to leave the normal cells unaffected. There are non-pathogenic viruses that are being developed for this kind of therapy. They have none of the side effects of chemotherapy. And mouse studies of this are very promising. VSV is one candidate for the use in human anti-cancer therapy. Okay, back to bacteria. The third strategy for uh, controlling bacterial infections without producing an evolutionary response is to manipulate bacterial public goods. So a public good is something that's produced at a cost by an individual that benefits the population as a whole. Bacteria produce at least two kinds of public goods, molecules that signal the density of the local population and siderophores that scavenge iron from the medium. Bacteria need iron for their metabolism. Now both of these are virulence factors. Bacteria will not attack host tissue unless they sense that they are abundant enough to overcome the host immune system and they need the iron to grow and reproduce. So what you can see here is a diagram in which bacteria are producing molecules where a molecule produced by one cell is also being used by another cell. If we can quench these virulence factors outside the cells, that has some advantages. Extracellular action avoids resistance based on transport through the bacterial cell wall so we don't have to worry about coevolution of the cell wall. Any fitness benefit to an emerging mutant will be diluted across all local cells as with any other public good. Because a quenching agent may not have previously been experienced, that resistance has not evolved to that particular quenching agent. And this idea has been tested with gallium treatments of pseudomonas infections and it works. Gallium is quenching the iron uptake in siderophores and by flooding the infection uh, with gallium, Pseudomonas loses the benefit of producing siderophores. They aren't doing any good anymore. 
So there's invasion by the variants that aren't producing siderophores because they don't have any advantage, but they're costly. The variants that don't produce them invade. Once that is done, the public good is knocked out. Okay, to summarize, because pathogens rapidly evolve resistance to drugs, therapies are being explored that do not elicit an evolutionary response. Evolution can be slowed by not treating too intensely. This runs counter to conventional wisdom. Phage therapy is promising and I think certainly deserves a lot more exploration. Disruption of bacterial public goods has worked in a model system and might be something that could be carried out in a real patient. I think that also deserves more ex exploration.